Hello everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing what is, I think, Candle Science's third release this year, uh, 2023, of year-round fragrance oils. Uh, I think at this point, they pretty much set a record with themselves for releasing the most fragrance oils in a given year. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna be smelling these out of the bottle, um, giving you my unfiltered first impressions. And uh, these are my absolute favorite videos to film. Fragrances, as you know, have a special place in my heart and on this channel. I know you all really enjoy seeing this kind of content as well. So we're gonna do a first impression video of these oils. And if you are new, uh, consider subscribing. I am always posting candle business related content as well as soap business related content. Um, you'll see those kind of videos here and there um, as well. Um, but anyways, let's get right into today's video and I hope that you enjoy. So before we get into the unboxing, I always like to put up the disclaimer that this is just a first impressions video. So you're always gonna wanna test these in a final product before having any final impressions and please always do your own testing. These are just my opinions and fragrance is highly subjective. So it's definitely going to vary from person to person what you think of a given oil. Something that I really like, you might not like and something that you really like, I might put on my fails list. Um, but with all that said, let's get right into this unboxing. And I have not even looked at the descriptions. Most of you know that with these types of videos, I usually just kind of like to not have any information prior to filming and just kind of see, um, be surprised by what comes in and give you all what my impressions are. But on the screen, I will also put up the scent notes, which I have not consulted um, at the time of recording this video uh, so that you all can laugh at me when I probably get none of the fragrance notes right. Um, <laughs> here we go. Uh, usually they put these in a box. So these guys are all just kind of right in here. First up, oh my God. Oh, wait a second, guys. This is not, this is a fall fragrance release. My my bad. So they've had like three year round ones as well, but this is a fall fragrance release. All right, so this first one here is Iced Gingerbread. And I believe that they already have a ginger and spice fragrance, as well as a gingerbread fragrance, a Hansel and Gretel's house fragrance that I'm very familiar with, and also a snickerdoodle fragrance that is one of my personal staples that definitely gives that kind of gingerbread aesthetic. So I'm curious where they're going with this one. My guess is that it's probably gonna be a little bit more kind of like a bite to it, hopefully. Um, hopefully different from those other oils. And this next one here is called Cranberry. Prosecco, um, probably not gonna be one that I'm really into, but I'll be curious how that goes. Usually like the alcoholic scents, I feel like they're very hard for fragrance companies to do. Um, I know Candle Science used to have a Chardonnay fragrance that I think they recently discontinued. They do have one that's called, I think it's Cranberry Absinthe or something like that, that I really like. I mix it with um, red cranberry, I believe and I'll put the blend in the description box, but it's been a very popular candle of mine. Um, anyways, this next one is called, interesting. This is called Orange Pomander. So they do have a peppercorn pomander fragrance already. And peppercorn pomander is one that I've had in my line off and on. Um, I had it a couple years back when it was first introduced and then I took it off the line because I didn't like it. It's a phenomenal thrower in like soy. I used 464 um, at the time and I really didn't like it, but I had some customers that were very into it. Um, to me, it was just a little artificial um, and I wanted something that was just a more authentic kind of citrusy spice type of a fragrance. And so anyways, this will be interesting. Um, I'm hoping that maybe this captures what I was looking for in peppercorn pomander. All right, next up we've got, ooh, almond macaron. Now this one is intriguing to me. I recently reviewed a macaron fragrance by Dupe um, that I thought was pretty darn good. And this one has the almond to it, so I feel like it may be kind of along that um, vibe, kind of like the As Fate Will Have It by 1617, or uh, I think there's another one. Um, I'll put the fragrance I'm thinking of on the screen, but there are a couple of those kind of almondy amaretto fragrances out there that I tend to really like personally. So this will be 
probably uh, one that I will enjoy. And then this next one here, ooh, mint white chocolate. Now, you all know chocolate fragrances on this channel are ones that I absolutely give almost the hardest time for because I oftentimes think chocolate fragrances smell like your dog's, you know, kind of wax in the ears type of an aesthetic. Um, I used to have a golden retriever growing up and, you know, sometimes you smell things that are kind of like how they describe the chocolate fragrances um, from some of these candle companies. Anyways, uh, this one is called Mint White Chocolate. So I'm hoping the mint kind of helps and I'm hoping that the chocolate is not a dog's earwax type of a chocolate. And the last two fragrances, ooh, Autumn Glow, interesting. So my collection in the fall, as some of you will know and remember the last four years, I think this is going on my fourth year, fourth or fifth year, um, is called Autumnal Glow. So I call uh, my autumn collection the Autumnal Glow collection every year. My winter collection is Winter Wonderland collection. Summer is Summer Lovin' collection. But interesting, so this is Autumn Glow um, fragrance itself. I'm probably expecting sort of a leaves type of a vibe where you get that kind of berry note with kind of a spice note, you know, something like that. Um, all right, next up and lastly, we have, ooh, pumpkin spice buttercream. All right. Interesting. Candle Science has got several pumpkin fragrances that I really like that um, I'll talk a little bit more about later when we smell this one. Okay, I don't know what I want to start with. Uh, I think I want to do this almond macaron. Uh, so as I mentioned before, I tend to really like these types of kind of nutty with a little bit of that gourmand, but also kind of an upscale, kind of an amaretto type of a vibe. So I'm personally hoping that this is maybe a more budget friendly option for some of you who can't afford like As Fate Will Have It by 1617. But that's putting the stakes pretty darn high because I recently said that fragrance was one of my favorite, well, I said it was my favorite gourmand of all time as of recent. So anyways, this is Almond Macaron by Candle Science. Let's see what it's gonna do for us. Oh. Okay, nothing like As Fate Will Have It. However, this smells like a spot on almond macaron. Uh, it's like that almond amaretto cookie. I get it to a T. Um, I would not say this is an upscale fragrance though at all. This is definitely, um, you know, kind of just your one of your classics, one of your <sighs> nostalgic fragrances. Like this will take you right back. If any of you have had those cookies, this reminds me of those almond cookies. And wow. Yeah, so I'm getting like the frosting, but I'm getting that kind of, that almondy bite with a little bit of spice to it. Maybe a little bit of cardamom, maybe a little bit of kind of vanilla kind of buttercream, but not a super heavy buttercream. It's not overly sweet really for a gourmand. I feel like it, as it kind of dries down more, I could imagine this one burning, kind of leaning more upscale, but I'm definitely not gonna compare it to As Fate Will Have It because there's no comparison there. Um, they're totally different um, types of almond amaretto. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of impressed by that. Let's take a total turn here and check out this Autumn Glow and see what this one's gonna do. I'm expecting something that's kind of like a leaves fragrance. So typically those will be where you have that kind of berry note coupled with a spice note, maybe a little bit of a nectar type of a note. So sort of like a fruity component as well. All right. So here goes Autumn glow and I splash the fragrance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. This is kind of not what I was, hmm. Yeah, this is kind of nostalgic for me actually. So it, I'm definitely getting more spice than I expected to. This kind of reminds me almost, like if this was called Grandma's Kitchen Spice, I would believe it. Um, it's definitely got a lot of different spice notes. I'm getting maybe some cardamom, a hint of star anise, maybe some nutmeg and clove to this one. Not cinnamon heavy though. Maybe there's some cinnamon in it, but it's kind of more in the background. Um, 
There's something fruity in this fragrance too. Maybe a little bit of orange or mandarin uh, <laughs> in the background. And there's also kind of like a cedary, kind of like a nutty component to this fragrance. I don't know if I'm picking up walnut or kind of, hmm. Yeah, it's kind of more of like, I'm picking up like a walnutty, almondy type of a characteristic to the base, maybe a pecan. Um, yeah, and there is a hint of something kind of sweet, but it's definitely more spicy. Um, this one, it, it takes me right back to kind of, I think my mom used to burn something by Yankee that was similar to this in the kitchen around the holidays in the fall and winter. Uh, I think that this one could definitely be versatile in that you could use it through the fall and throughout the holiday season as well. Um, and I could definitely see this one burning at night, like at a farmer's market, um, if you're able to burn something when you're selling at your table. Um, it's so, so nostalgic for me. It's like a warm, almost like embracing type of a fragrance. Let's take a look at this mint white chocolate fragrance. And this one is really unique sounding to me. I don't think I've ever, oh, mint white chocolate ganache. I don't think I've ever smelled a fragrance called, maybe the closest is like a mint chocolate by Wholesale Supplies Plus, I wanna say. Okay, so have no idea what to expect besides something that hopefully does not smell like dog's earwax. Mmm. Yeah, this is definitely not a dog's earwax. I'm definitely getting more of a white chocolate. Um, this is not a chocolatey fragrance though. I would say it's a white chocolate as the name suggests and I'm definitely getting a prominent like menthol type of a peppermint. It's like a sweet kind of peppermint stick with a little bit of spearmint to it. It's kind of like an iced peppermint uh, type of a scent. I would say if you have tried North Pole by the Flaming Candle, this is kind of similar to that where it's like a sweet peppermint, but this one has that kind of Andy's chocolate done white chocolate peppermint bark type of an aesthetic. And I'm pleasantly surprised out of the bottle. I do wish that, um, so there's a strong buttercream note uh, coming through on this one, kind of a vanilla buttercream. And I like it, but it is kind of pretty prominent. Uh, the more this dries down on the strip. And I do wish that that were a little bit lighter. Next up, let's take a look at this Cranberry Prosecco. And this one, I'm hoping smells like not too sweet. I want something maybe kind of like that sparkly, beautiful, I don't even know what a Cranberry Prosecco is, so I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> In all honesty. Mmm, okay, yeah. This, to me, personally, smells like something that I get from Bath and Body Works in a spray can in the kids section. And it smells like spot on, like something that I have had out of a spray foam can from Bath and Body Works when I was a kid. Um, I think this would be a very popular fragrance. It is not for me, but I can almost guarantee you that this fragrance is gonna have at least four stars. It's very prominent out of the bottle. It's very happy and jubilant and just kind of like a resounding, joyful, it feels very holiday to me. And you could even maybe take something like this and mix it with something a little more red and name it like vampire blood or forbidden fruit or something and make it Halloween, but then blend it with something else and have it go for Christmas. And, but I could also see this one going year round as well. Like I said, just kind of as like a berry jubilee type of a fragrance um, or something along the lines of that. It's definitely not a true to life cranberry by any means. It's very sweet and it's very kind of sparkly. Uh, I don't know what Prosecco actually is. I know it's an alcoholic drink, but I don't really know what it's supposed to smell like. So I can't imagine it smelling like this. Okay, next up, let's take a look at iced ginger snap. Now this one, as I mentioned earlier, if we can get this to focus here, there we go. This one is interesting because Candle Science does have a lot of kind of gingery fragrances already. But this one, I'm thinking maybe will kind of have that sharp ginger character, but then also be kind of like in, maybe kind of like a cookie almost. 
Um, so, I don't know. Let's see what iced ginger snap is gonna do for us. Mmm, okay. This smells like one of those, um, if any of you have tried those almond, or not almond, those windmill ginger cookies, instantly smelling this. I can say without question that I have not smelled a fragrance to this day until this one that smells more like one of those windmill uh, ginger snap cookies than this. Um, and I just whack myself in the face lightly with the blotter strip. Um, yeah, so this is like a deep, rich ginger. Uh, this is very different than Hansel and Gretel's house. I'd say that that one is more of I don't know, there's something really, there's a lot of depth to this one. And I think it's partly because of the the cinnamon, but it's not like a typical cinnamon. It's like kind of that deep, warm, almost sensual cinnamon. But this smells like a cookie, but it's very much like a rich spice to it. And there is a sweetness, but the sweetness is kind of more in the background to the spices. And it's a very, very true, wholehearted gourmand. However, it does not make me nauseated or seem fake to me in any way. And I think that that is what has impressed me so far about all of the gourmands that I've smelled in this collection. The um, mint white chocolate or whatever it was called and the almond macaron. Uh, both to a tea smell exactly like the name, I would say, with the exception being that the mint white chocolate ganache has a little bit more buttercream than I would like. Wow, yeah, this smells exactly like a windmill cookie. So we have two oils left here. Um, let's take a look at this orange pomander. I'm gonna save the pumpkin spice buttercream for last. Um, there were a lot of gourmands in this launch and kind of fruity, spicy fragrances which I think is good. I think that those do pretty well um, in the fall. So here goes orange pomander. And again, I'm kind of expecting something like peppercorn pomander, but I'm hoping that it's more of a true to life orange. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this smells very much like peppercorn pomander. Um, I think that the orange is a little bit better in this one, but not much better. Like it, it's very similar. I think that this one will be very popular if it throws well in a candle. Um, I would say that I prefer this to peppercorn pomander out of the bottle, but the real test would be when it's burning. Um, so I get an orange note, I get a peppery kind of note. Um, I get kind of some different spices. I would say that this one is about equally balanced between the orange, maybe it's 60% of the orange kind of mandarin notes, 40% of the kind of spice notes. Um, I get a strong clove note to this one, as well as kind of a all spice cardamom aesthetic, a um, little bit of star anise maybe. And then this one does have a nice kind of rounded base to it as well, where it just kind of all blends, I think a little bit better than the peppercorn pomander did. Um, so yeah, I think that this one could be, it could be good. I don't think it's anything super unique. Um, Christmas Hearth is kind of similar to this as well. Uh, so a lot of fragrances, Christmas Hearth has like a pine component to it as well. If any of you have smelled Winter by Bath and Body Works, kind of similar to that type of a vibe. Um, really popular type of a fragrance, nothing novel, um, but I think it may be a little bit better than the peppercorn pomander. And last but not least, I'm gonna check out this pumpkin spice buttercream and see what this one's gonna do for us. I will say Candle Science has a couple of pretty good pumpkin scents. Um, most notably, in my opinion, is uh, their pumpkin souffle. It's a really good thrower in soy, uh, as well as pretty much any natural wax that I've heard people talk about using it in. And um, it, it smells kind of like Makesy's, uh, I'll put the name up on the screen of the scent that I'm thinking of. And then they also have, I think it's like a pumpkin, I can't remember the name, but there's another pumpkin one that to me smells like a pumpkin snickerdoodle. Um, toasted pumpkin spice is what it's called. To me, that one smells like a pumpkin snickerdoodle. And I haven't tried their pumpkin pie fragrance yet. I think there might be one or two other ones that I haven't tried, but yeah. So this one has the buttercream and it says it's called pumpkin spice buttercream. So I expect it to be maybe in between their other 
their toasted pumpkin spice and their pumpkin souffle. Hmm. Yeah, okay, guys. This is very, very, very similar to toasted pumpkin spice. Um, like, if someone had put the label toasted pumpkin spice on this bottle, I would, I would believe it wholeheartedly. Like, I, I can't even believe this is a separate fragrance. This smells like toasted pumpkin spice to a T. To a T. Um, I'm gonna have to go get my pumpkin toasted pumpkin spice to compare them side by side because I can't even believe that this is like a separate fragrance. Give me one second. Okay, and then I also grabbed North Pole. So I'm gonna smell this one too. North Pole is what I was comparing the mint white chocolate ganache fragrance to. I just ran up three flights of stairs. Uh, okay, and then this is the toasted pumpkin spice. So I just wanna see side by side because like I said, um, very surprised that that fragrance is not a, is not this fragrance. So this on my, on my right, your left, I believe, is gonna be the toasted pumpkin spice. And then I'm gonna grab the pumpkin spice buttercream and put that on a strip as well. Okay, so let me get about the same amount. So this is the toasted pumpkin spice. And then this is the pumpkin spice buttercream. Okay, pumpkin spice buttercream. It smells just like the name, um, but it's like a pumpkin snickerdoodle is what I get, like the overall effect of it. It's pumpkin, it's sweet, it's spicy. Um, it's like a sweet gourmand version of a pumpkin spice. And then this is um, the toasted pumpkin spice. Yeah, wow. These literally smell like the same oil. They're different colors, but I've also had my five pound jug for about a year. Um, I can get about two years on that fragrance, I think is what I've written. But wow. I will say that the throw out of the bottle on the toasted pumpkin spice is coming through better than the one on the pumpkin spice buttercream. So, okay, and then I also grabbed North Pole by the Flaming Candle. So this is what I use um, for my Peppermint Patty fragrance that has been in my line, uh, my Winter Wonderland collection for, um, this year will be like the fourth year, I believe, fourth or fifth year. Um, so I wanted to just compare that to the Mint White Chocolate Ganache that was just released. Oh, I can smell this peppermint, the North Pole fragrance from like a foot away. It's so good. But I wish it were stronger in terms of the hot throw. At least in my natural waxes that I use, the hot throw is not quite as strong as I would like. All right, so this is the North Pole, which it's like a perfect peppermint. If any of you have smelled Twisted Peppermint by Bath & Body Works, North Pole by The Flaming Candle, I mean, it's like everything you wanted and more from Twisted Peppermint. I also have Twisted Peppermint by Aztec, and that's a good one, but Aztec, the hot throw just doesn't work very well for me in general with a lot of their oils. Um, okay, and then this is the white chocolate ganache. Okay, yeah, very different. I mean, they're related, but they're like second cousins. Um, the white chocolate ganache, you get a lot more of the buttercream. And actually, the mint is hard for me to even pick up once I've smelled the North Pole fragrance. I feel like these two would go really well together though, like as a blend. Mm. Um, the Twisted Peppermint, or the North Pole by the Flaming Candle and the Mint White Chocolate Ganache. But I do like the Mint White Chocolate Ganache too. Like it's really warm and cozy and kind of like, nostalgic, like, oh, this takes me to New Carlisle, Indiana, where my mom used to go at Christmas time when she would look at the Department 56 Village shops and my sister and I would be drug along and we would try to get hot chocolate um, afterwards and it was always like snowing and it was so beautiful, but we didn't always like shopping as much as she did. Um, yeah, 
I like that though, the white chocolate, mint white chocolate ganache. I really, I like it. The more I smell it, the more it's growing on me. All right, so then the last thing I wanna do is rank these fragrances. Um, I'm gonna go from my least favorite to my most favorite. Um, I would have to say my least favorite of these oils, and again, um, please take this with a grain of salt because I think that this one is gonna be pretty popular. It's just, it's not for me personally, and it's not what I would put in one of my lines. Um, but this is Cranberry Prosecco. Again, it smells like something I would get from the kids section at Bath and Body Works in a spray foam can, and it's my least favorite. All right, and then after that one, I'm gonna have to put the, um, I'm gonna have to put the pumpkin spice buttercream just because I'm surprised that this is a separate fragrance from the toasted pumpkin spice. Um, yeah, it's not approved in soaps either. This one's not approved in soaps, which is common for a fragrance with a lot of like spicy cinnamon type notes. Um, but I'm just curious what's supposed to be different about this one because I literally cannot detect any difference from the toasted pumpkin spice other than the fact that this fragrance doesn't have as strong of a um, throw out of the bottle as the toasted pumpkin spice. All right, and then after that one, I will put all these other ones, like the last five, are all pretty good oils in my opinion. And the other two are as well, but it's just that, like I said, the pumpkin spice, it smells just like the the one, the toasted pumpkin spice and the cranberry prosecco is just not for me. But yeah, next I'm gonna have to put the orange pomander. So this one I think is very similar to the peppercorn pomander. However, it does give a nicer orange note in my opinion. It's less artificial and I hope that the hot throw is still really great. Um, oh, and it can be used at two to 5% in soaps as well. That's really nice. I wonder how the scent retention is because I know with orange fragrances, a lot of the times they can fade in cold process soap. Okay, after that one, I think I'm gonna put, this is really hard for these last four. Um, I think, man, Maybe the Autumn Glow? Yeah, the Autumn Glow is not quite as prominent as I would like out of the bottle. Um, it's very nostalgic. It's like a warm, nutty, spicy oil that does differ quite a bit from, I wouldn't say it's anything novel, but I would say that it, it stands out from some of the other spices that I've smelled just because it's more cozy and it's more, if you have smelled, I believe it's called Nutmeg Vanilla by Stone Candles, this would be a good one to compare. And that's a very expensive uh, high-end oil. I would say that this, um, it, it could lean more towards an upscale line. Um, and then the last three, so the mint white chocolate ganache, the ice ginger snap. Okay, so the ice ginger snap and the almond macaron get my like resounding praise just because they are so true to name. I mean, they just take me right to what they are calling the fragrance and there's nothing artificial. There's nothing that is kind of competing. Um, they're super prominent out of the bottle. So, but the mint white chocolate ganache is really unique in its own way. Um, so I don't know, I guess I'm gonna have to put in, let's see, we are in third position. I'm gonna have to put the, smell the ice ginger snap again. So specifically what I would want for my line, oh man, these are all good. The almond macaron is so unique. Um, yeah, I think my customers would would probably really like the mint white chocolate. So I guess in third position, I'm gonna have to put the iced ginger snap. It smells to a tea like one of those windmill cookies. Um, so, and then in second place, I'm gonna have to put the mint white chocolate ganache. This one probably will become part of my line. Um, 
It's like a buttercream on steroids. You could definitely bring it out in the fall, but this one's gonna be all through like December and January and February, people are gonna wanna burn this. Absolutely st stunning, just stunning. And then the almond macaron is gonna take my number one, I think in this one, because it's so prominent. And I just have a sweet spot, as I mentioned, for those almond amaretto type of fragrances. This one smells just like a cookie and it's, but it's not overly sweet and you get that kind of nice, kind of mature almondy type of a note to this one. And uh, yeah, so this takes my number one spot. I wonder if this can be, oh darn. So it can't be used in cold process soaps. So that would be my one um, kind of frustration, I guess, with this one, because I would love to be able to make a soap with this. I think that it would be really popular along the holidays, um, especially. But anyways, that is gonna be all for today. And if you did enjoy this one, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below of some of your favorite fall fragrances um, and which of these fragrances that you are most excited to try. And a thank you to Candle Science for sending me these oils. Uh, this video was in no way sponsored or affiliated, but as I mentioned, they did reach out to me and send these oils, which really helps me to be able to make sustainable content for you all on this channel. Um, but anyways, I'm sending everyone peace, love, and light, and I am wishing all of you happy candle making. Mm -hmm.